Okay, Algebra 1, we are moving on to Section 2.3, Solving Two-Step and Multi-Step Equations. So you are going to take what we have learned with adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing to solve equations, and you're going to combine them into um, one problem. So the first type, these are just your basic two-step equations. Again, this is where it comes in handy to have some general rules that you follow every time, like drawing a line down the middle of your equation. The next thing I do is I locate the variable. So like right here, I've got the x, and I've got two numbers with the x that I want to move. I want to move the 6 and the 2. So the way I look at this is that you have to undo the operations in the way that they would, um, the opposite way that they would happen. So for example, first I'd multiply by two, then I would subtract it from, from, from six. So you have to move the six first and then the two because you have to go in reverse. The away, other way to think about it is who is furthest away from the x? Well, the six is. Six is a positive six, so I need to subtract six. 10 minus 6 is 4. And then don't forget that there's a negative with that 2x. So then, how do you get rid of the negative 2? You divide by a negative 2. And 4 divided by a negative 2 is a negative 2. You can check this the same way that we did before. So for example, 10 equals 6 minus 2 times negative 2. 10 equals 6 minus 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Well, if you subtract a negative, you're really adding a positive. Does 10 equal 10? It does, so we did it right. Okay, so for your next one, who is furthest away from the x? The 4 is. It is a negative 4, so to cancel it out, I need to add 4. That cancels. And I have 7x equals 7. It, the x by itself, I would then divide by 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1. Okay. Number 3. Locate your variable. You need to move the 1.2 and the 5.7. I would start by adding the 5.7. And then when I add this, 12, make sure you line up your decimal points. 5, 6, 7. Okay. Then to get y alone, you need to divide by that 1.2. And when you have decimals, you can think of it just like 72 divided by 12. That works. Um, so you would get, but then you have to think about the decimal as well. And so it actually fits in there six times. Your answer is six. And then this one, I couldn't type this up very well, but this is n divided by 7 plus 2. So the first thing you're going to do is get rid of the 2. So n divided by 7 equals 2 minus 2 is 0. And then n divided by 7, you are going to multiply by 7. n equals 0 for your final answer. Okay, so those are just basic two-step equations. Now I'm giving you some two-step equations that contain fractions. Um, so my trick to deal with these is to find a common denominator, okay? So when I find a common denominator, I look at all the fractions, and like this one is just put over one, and this one two, and you find a common denominator. So 15, five, and five, they all go into 15. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna multiply these two by three over three to get rid of it. So this is a Q, I'm sorry, this one turned out kind of blurry. Q over 15 equals 3 times 1 is, or sorry, minus 3 times 1 is 3 over 15 equals 3 times 3 is 9 over 15. So the really cool thing about this is once you get rid of them, you can forget about the bottom and it works out. So now my problem is q minus 3 equals 9. But how do you get q by itself? 
you add 3, and you get Q equals 12. So it makes your problem way easier. We didn't Once you found a common denominator, you really didn't have to deal with the actual fraction portion of it. So down here, 2, 8, and 1, what do they all have in common? Well, they all go into 8. So I'd multiply this one by 4s and this one by 8s. So this would be 4 times x is 4x over 8. He didn't have to touch the middle one. And then this is just 8 over 8. Okay, so like I said, you can forget about the bottom. And you have 4x plus 3 equals 8. And there's your two sides of the equation. You move the 3 first. 4x equals 8 minus 3 is 5. Then your last step is to divide by the 4. Now sometimes these might come out as a fraction. So this is 5 fourths or 1 and 1 fourth. But I don't want decimals. Okay, number 7. This is kind of like the first one here. 3, 5, and 15. They go all into 15. So this one I'm going to multiply by 5s. This one I'm going to multiply by 3s. And then I don't have to touch the other one. So 5w over 15 plus 6 over 15 equals 1 over 15. And you forget about the bottom. 5w plus 6 equals 1 minus 6 on both sides. 5w equals negative 5. And your last step, divide by 5. W equals 5 divided by 5 is 1. Negative 5 divided by positive 5 is a negative 1. So these ones are taking a little bit more work. Okay, the next one, 1, 5, and 2. They both go into 10. So this would be multiplied by a 5 over 5. This one would be multiplied by a 2 over 2. And don't forget, this one has to be multiplied by that 10 over 10. So 10 times 3 is 30. This one would be 2a over 10. It's 5 over 10. And we're going to cancel this out. Rewrite it. 2a plus 5. And I subtract my 5 first because it's further away from that A. 30 minus 5 is 25. And I can see that this one's going to come out as a fraction because I know 25 is not an even number. So 25 over 2 gives us 12 and a half equals A. So those are how you deal with fractions. So once you get your method down, it's not too bad. Okay, the next type, um, they say simplify before solving the equation. So one thing that I always do on these ones is I look at the side of the equation. Is there any, are there any like terms that I can add together? So for example, on this one, I have a positive 6x and a negative 8x that I can add together first. So if I have 6x and 8x, I'm just going to write it like this, minus 2x. Okay, so then who do I move first? I've got to move the 3 by subtraction. Don't forget that you have to bring down this negative. And then you divide both sides by that negative 2 x equals a negative 5. That was a little bit off the screen there. Okay, this next one here is a little bit tricky. We had some on our worksheet like this the other day that we had that negative 1 there. And this has to be distributed to both inside the expression. 
so this is 9 equals 6 minus, and I'll just put the 1x there, negative 1 times positive 2 is a negative 2. Then what can I combine? Well, I can combine my 6 and my minus 2. So I get 9 equals 6 minus 2 is 4 minus 1x. Then I would move that 4 to the other side first. And you get 5 equals negative 1x. When I divide both sides by that negative 1, really running out of room there, I get negative 5 equals x. Okay. And again, if you want to check this, you can put it in and it should come out correct. So I'll just show you on this one. I've got 9 equals 6 minus negative 5 plus 2. Well, what is negative 5 plus 2? Negative 3. 9 equals 6 minus negative 3. Well, what happens when you subtract a negative? We add the opposite. 9 equals 9. So we did it right. That's a good sign. Okay, a couple more here. So... The first thing you want to do is check to see if there's anything on each side of the equation. Some people get confused, like they think that they're moving them to the other side, so they would like add or subtract these um, and try to move them over, but they're on the same side, so you can treat them like combining like terms. So 2 minus um, 8a, I get 3 minus 6a. And then this one distribute to the other side. So this would be a negative 6 plus 2d equals 4. Okay, then if I solve these real quick, first I'm going to move the 3 over, my subtraction. Negative 6a equals 8 minus 3 is 5. Divide both sides by a negative 6. And I get a equals negative 5, 6. You can just go ahead and leave it. If you know it's not going to be a nice fraction or a nice number, just leave it in a fraction form. That's totally fine. And this one, I'm going to move the 6 first by addition. 2d equals 10. Divide both sides by 2d equals 5. Okay. So Alex belongs to a music club. In this club, students can buy a student discount card for $19.95. This card allows them to buy CDs for $3.95 each. After one year, Alex has spent $63.40. Write an equation to sol and solve how many CDs Alex bought during the year. So he can buy a card. So the card plus um, the CDs. How should I do this? equals the total. So the card is $19.95, we know that. And the cost of a CD is $3.95 per CD equals the total, and he spent $63.40. So I kind of like to write it out in words before I try to make an, ex uh, an equation. So then I'm going to subtract $19.95. Three point nine five C equals. So let's do some math here. This gives me five. This gives me four. This gives me three. Well, we know that we're buying CDs, so it kind of has to be a nice number. So should we guess? 3.95. Well, 4 goes into 40 10 times. I know it's not 10, so we try 11. Um, this would be 3.95. And then just again. Let's see. 13. 43, 45, look at there, and then we move over two spots, so we did the 
correct guessing. And they got 11 CDs. Okay. The last type of problem are a little bit different. Um, it says, if this, find the value of A plus 4. So first, we have to find the value of A. Okay, so just ignore the second part of this equation. So the first thing I'm going to do is minus 12. 3a equals 18. And then the second part I'm going to divide by 3. A equals 6. So they say if, basically they just said, if A equals 6, find the value of A plus 4. So basically this equates to this. So then, well, what's A plus 4? Well, A is 6, so 6 plus 4 equals 10. So that's what you want for your final answer there. We'll do one more like that. So again, ignore this part. Just solve your equation. Minus 4, minus 4, 2x equals negative 28. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x equals a negative 14. So then it says, if x equals 14, then find 3x. So 3 times negative 14. So if I did 14 times 3, I get 42. And it's a negative 42 since one was negative and one was positive. Okay, so those are a little bit trickier, but just take it in two parts and you'll do just fine. Let me know if you guys have any questions.